Hey everybody, welcome to VTS 32. I think I'm your host, Keith. And, uh, well, welcome back if you've been waiting around a while for this one. And if this is your first one, well, sorry for the delay. Uh, all the same, good to have you folks. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, here is in my mom's cabin in the woods in Tennessee. That's where I'm at right now. Anyhow, um... Uh, we're doing some stuff here to help mom get some things together. Anyhow, uh, thanks for your patience for this video. Uh, for those of you who are buying this back issue, you're wondering what the heck's he talking about? I won't drag it on any further. Anyhow, uh, welcome to the next part of our lip sync series. Um, facial animation, I should say. This is going to be our first part about lip sync. Um, what I'm going to talk about this week, uh, month, sorry, this month, is I'm going to talk about um, the basics, the core structure of getting good, solid, readable lip sync. Okay? It's what I call the Muppet Theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a minute about the Muppet Theory. Okay, so what is it about the Muppets? that makes me so interested in them, other than Kermit's cool and Miss Piggy's kind of annoying and Fozzie the Bear is really, really annoying. Um, well, I learned a couple of things. Uh, once when I was working with uh, Karen Prell, who's an animator who used to be a Muppeteer. Um, and Karen's been around a number of places in the industry and she's got lots of friends. A lot of folks already know her. And she's a real sweetheart, but she taught us some things about puppetry. But I kind of knew this beforehand, um, but it was really, it really made sense to me um, the concept of just hitting the right opening and closing. Really, that's it. Uh, I mean, it sounds so strange, but you stop and think about it. Stop and think about Kermit the Frog. What's, what's his ability to do phonemic shapes? None, really. You take a look at a puppet, you know, that's got a clapboard mouth. That's cardboard inside there. There's no ability to shape the mouth at all. There's no way to make it look like it's saying an ooh. There's no way to make it look like it's saying an F. There's no way to really... Well, you might be able to do an F if you tuck it under and he's a soft one. But for the clapboard ones, like, I don't know, Fozzie Bear, for instance, it's really, really difficult. There's no Vs. There's, 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 there's no real sense, even of emotion. Really, there's no way to make them smile or frown. Again, unless they're soft, you can kind of crunch them up or stuff like that. But for the most part, they're just pretty static. But we buy into it, okay? Whenever you see a really, really talented Muppeteer or Puppeter, uh, Puppeteer, I guess you would say, uh, get into that character and that hand goes inside that puppet, it's like your eyes are magically drawn and that thing's alive, okay? And there's a lot of things involved in that. There's, there's the suspension of disbelief of a lot of things. The motion of the thing is very, very real. But one of the things that really makes us stick with it is we buy into that thing as a live thing, okay? Uh, when we look at it, we say, wow, it's, it's, like, it's like a lie because it thinks and it's funny and it's got personality. But when it speaks, we're not like, well, there's something wrong with that. And everybody has kind of seen good puppeteering and bad puppeteering, right? There's good puppeteering where you, you just buy that whatever is being said is coming out of the mouth of that, of that puppet. Okay, that creature is saying something and, blah, you know, you, you're like, oh, okay, that thing on the hand is saying that, not some guy behind the thing with his hand up inside of it is saying it, okay? What's the difference? How do you tell good puppeteering technique from bad? You're thinking, wait, I'm, I'm an animator. I don't care about puppeteering. Oh, wait, 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 okay? Stick with me here. The, the thing I'm kind of getting at is that there's a certain principle at work that allows us to buy into a piece of cloth as a living creature saying what it's saying, thinking what it's thinking, being what it is, okay? There's a principle at work in the way it speaks that we can borrow and apply to our characters in animation. And a lot of times, many of us are not in the realm where we can take, you know, a week to do four seconds of animation and just lovingly craft it and get all the stuff exactly the way we want to get it. We don't have that luxury. So what do we do? Well, you learn to go for the core principles at work and get the idea of this thing living and breathing and being alive, right? So the thing you got to do is think about in terms of what I call open and close, all right? You get open and close, 
And then, since we're in animation, we got a little more flexibility in the puppet. Wide and narrow. All right? Open and close, wide and narrow. What does that mean? Well, open and close and wide and narrow are real simple. All right? Open and close. Okay, it's real simple. You buy that this hand might or might not be speaking to you. Why? Well, it could be that his mouth is working sometimes with the voice. My technique as a puppeteer isn't very good, but for the most part, you can believe that this hand is talking to you sometimes, I think. Okay, what did I just do there besides a really bad puppeting, okay? But if you watch my hand, you notice that the times that it felt like, hey, I could buy that as a character, the opens and the closes were working at the right time, okay? And the times where it didn't feel quite so connected, go ahead and rewind it, really. Rewind it and play that again and watch it, okay? I'll wait for you. Okay, I'm done waiting. Uh, but <laughs> rewind it, watch it. And the parts that you're like, oh, but that, that is the parts where the... the the opens and closes didn't really sync with what was coming out of my voice, okay? So that's really the first principle involved here. If you can just get the opens and closes to work, I've seen so many, so many examples of lip sync where the character's mouth is closing at the wrong time or the character's mouth is opening at the wrong time. It's really that simple. When I, the, the one show I worked on, you know, the Veggie Tales. I mean, I worked there, you know, four years. We worked on Veggie Tales quite a bit. The first thing you can learn, I mean, if you just get the opens and closes working, you're already ahead of the game. All right. So what's an open and what's a close? Okay, an open is any time there's a you, you don't want to go all the 100 percent or zero percent all the time. There's 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 variations in between. Okay, without setting a bunch of rules for you, you, you have to do is you have to learn how to analyze the sound that's coming out. Okay, uh, I'm going to be English centric here because I speak English. Okay. Sorry, but you, this will work in any language whatsoever because all you have to do is just analyze what the sounds are like. Okay, if it's a loud sound, loud sound, there's two things. Just take that word, or those two words, loud sound. Okay, watch my mouth. Loud sound. Okay, loud, the mouth is open more. Okay, loud sound. Sound, the mouth is only open about half as much. Okay, anything where the teeth have to come together, the tongue has to make contact, or the lips have to come together, is a close. It's pretty simple. All right, M's and P's and B's are definite, hard, 100% closed. Okay, even to the point of compression. Okay, you have, watch. Um, that means more, okay? So you can close and then compress. So it's almost like a like a negative 5% or negative 10% closed, okay? Uh, or 110% closed, sorry. 110% closed. So it goes closed, but then compresses. All right, so that's for M's and P's and, and V's, all right? M, P's, B's, okay? Sorry, I mean to screw you up there. I'm getting messed up in my own head. But, so you get that closure, okay? And a good trick, a neat little trick, is you close it and then on one frame and then compress on the second frame. All right, that'll help a lot. All right, because there's there's this rule. I'm sure you've read it in all kinds of animation notes and books and everything like that. M's, B's, P's. The mouth should be closed two frames, and really it should. You know, if you're animating on ones, if you're animating on twos, you got it for free, right? But if you're animating on ones, like we typically are on a computer, then you want to keep that contact closed for two frames, because if not, it feels too flappy and it doesn't have any weight to it. Okay, and it, the face has weight. My face has weight. Right here, you see that? That's all weight. <laughs> but, no, the idea here is you want to close it and then let it register. So, one frame, two frames. But instead of just one frame, two frames, go one frame, two frames. So, mm, mm, all right, one, two. So you compress it, okay? So that's part of the closing. So that's a 100%, even 110% closed. But what about things like S's? S? S? Try and say S with your mouth open. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you can't. Try and say can't with your mouth open. Can't. Can't. You can do it, but it's stupid, okay? 
So you think about teams, things like S's and N's and D's and T's. Um, anytime you're using the tongue that the, or the teeth or you're making a back of the throat sound like G's or K's, okay, all those could be somewhere, you know, any, any range of mostly closed, okay? For instance, loud sound. You know, okay, ignore the ins and outs, but just watch the jaw, okay? Loud sound. Loud sound. It's the D and the ND. It closes, but it doesn't close like an N. It's not like, oh, I don't know. Loud mom. <laughs> okay? But you notice the compression right there? So that's that's something you want to keep if you just get the opens and closes time. So what the first thing you do is you analyze you analyze your scene. Okay, you go through the scene, you say, okay, what do, what do I got here? And you break it down. And you can even do this just with the audio on an X sheet. Okay, if you want to get really crazy, you want to get real old school, plot this thing out on an X sheet and just sit there and figure out what frame these noises are happening. And you could literally just put a percent of how much it's going to be closed of the jaw. And really, all we're working with here is one rotation axis on the jaw. Da, 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 da. If you can just get that you're already ahead of the game, okay? So that's important to remember, all right? The opens and closes. Uh, things like L's, mostly closed. Um, but analyze the sound, you know? Look at it and say, okay, well, where is it louder? If it's, if it's a little stronger or there's an emphasis or an accent there, open the mouth a little bit more. What do you do about things like mm, words that are rolling together very quickly, like that? You know, what if I say I wanted a pumpkin, pumpkin pie? Well, you just watch what they're doing, you think about it. And if you need to, go ahead, say the line into a mirror. Mirrors, you can look at a mirror and say, I want a pumpkin pie. And just take a look at and don't overdo it. You're not singing opera here. I know when they see, teach you how to sing, they teach you to open and pronunciate your words. I used to be in chorus, I know, okay? So, <laughs> they, they tell you to project and all that stuff. So you make these really goofy faces because they want you to get your voice out there and pronunciate. But that's just, okay, that's not how we talk, all right? That's how we sing in a large auditorium, but that's not how we talk. So just talk naturally, all right? Repeat the line the way you hear it and just watch your mouth, okay? Don't worry so much about the shape of the lips and all that stuff. Don't worry about it just yet, okay? The thing to worry about worry don't even worry the thing to watch the thing to look out for is just the opening and closing how much is it open how much is it closed go from a hundred percent to you know minus five percent or whatever you know that's and then pick it pick a line in there somewhere and just put percentages if you can just do that like i said you'll be ahead of the game all right so that's one part of the muppet principle right? second part of the muppet principle is what i call narrows and wides okay because really what do you got here? You have ooh, e. That's it. Even if you don't roll the lip under. For F's and V's, the Muppets don't need it. We certainly didn't have enough VeggieTales. There was no lip. There's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, lip, lip. Okay, for all you veggie, VeggieTale fans, there's a little song right there. There was no lip, so you couldn't, you couldn't put teeth over there. But we got by because we did the opens and closes and the narrows and the wides. And again, just take a look at something. When you, when you watch and, and analyze a, a section of speech or you think about it, okay, E's, S's, T's, G's, anything that's got an E or a G, okay, it's gonna be a little bit wider, but it's not always wide, okay? You gotta remember, I mean, I wrote an article about this years ago, but the idea here is that the sound of a T by itself, say T, well, it's affected by the E. So you go, T. But what's a T? T, T, T. Does that really, just go T. Does he, do you need a mouth wide for a T? No, T. So you can say gold or goat. Okay. The only difference is how quickly you come off the closed. All right. So analyze that. Analyze these sorts of things. So you can say, and it's really understanding the speed as well. Okay, the opens and closes and the narrows and the wides. The, the, the narrows are oohs, 
okay? Oohs or ohs, but it's just a form of narrow, okay? The most extreme oo narrow is oo, okay? That's the most extreme. Everything else is just a variation of it. Everything else is just a percentage of strength. So if you can just think in that terms, you can give me a character. And if all they have is a jaw open, cheeks narrow and wide, and the ability to just roll this little bit of lip, from a speech standpoint, I can make him say anything in the world with three, four targets. That's it. From a speech standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, from an emotive character, unique, fun shapes, living kind of thing, we can do more in animation than he can do in puppetry. Okay, we can do more, and so we should when we have that opportunity. But I sometimes I think we get all caught up in the oh I gotta get the lips working, I gotta get the shapes going, and all that stuff. And next month, well. Next video, <laughs> we'll talk about the, the, the emotional shapes. But right now, we're just trying to focus on just getting the technical basics of speech working, okay? But again, when we have that puppet and we watch it, we buy it as a character. And a lot of the reason why we buy it as a character is because technically, it's hitting good puppeteers who practice a lot, not like me, with a lot of experience, with good technique. They are flawless and their ability to just hit the opens and closes. And the narrows or wides, that's a plus we have in animation. All right? So analyze it. Again, speak normally to a mirror. Just watch it. So those are two things. This is lip sync. I'm breaking it down so it's so easy you can't even think. Okay, it's so easy. Okay, opens and closes, narrows and wides. If you can just get that, you're 80%, 90% of the way to a Pixar mouth lip, lip sync. I'm... You know, the guys at Pixar will probably be mad at me for saying that, but I'm, it's the truth, man. If you can just get those two things, you are well on your way to top-level lip sync, okay? Because there's a certain point in which you're just flapping the lips, man. So it's something to think about. Let's take a look at some examples. Um, I'll show you some examples of uh, some play blasts where things are on and things are not quite on. And then we'll, we'll look at, uh, well, we'll just look, okay? All right, I'm not going to describe it to you. You can watch it for yourself. Okay, let's take a look at this. We have a scene here where I've uh, loaded up one of my favorite little mess around characters, Moom. He's very, very fun. Um, and we're going to use a piece of dialogue that I just recorded um, a little while ago. Um, and it's, uh, it's a guy saying, you, you forgot the cheese. In fact, um, here, let's take a moment and we'll take a look at um, the waveform for this. And we'll also take a listen to it. Just a moment. All right, so this is what it looks like. You forgot the cheese. Okay, and here, just go ahead and listen to it. You forgot the cheese. All right, so what we want to do here is you can actually take a look at right here in the waveform where almost how much you're going to open your mouth. Um, we're going to work on the jaw open thing right away, and you could take the maximum, say this one right here, you forgot the cheese. All right, so you could even just take a look at what's happening here in the waveform and figure out how much the jaw needs to open and where it needs to open. Um, and in Maya, if you want, you can make this waveform taller. Um, one way to do that is in the preferences. I'll try and dig that up real quick for you. Um, let's see here. Height. You can make it like 4x if you want. All right. 2x, whatever. We'll make it 4x so that's easy to see. Okay. And we'll hit save. Um, it's, hello, I said save. So you can see it right in here that you can almost just go right off of this. And this right here is the jaw control. So we'll just go ahead and we'll set a key right there. And we want to lead, uh, most, most lip sync, you want to try and lead the sound uh, a couple of frames. But sometimes when you're working on it and you're scrubbing through it, it's just easier to hit the sound and then we can shift the frames later. So we'll do that. Um, so we'll hit a little bit of open there. And then get closed for the f forgot part. You for you forgot. So you got to get the or is right there, and we want to get it closed again a little bit. And then maybe we'll just move that over there, and then the got will get that open really big. 
so you forgot you can close that up not all the way because it's a T right so an F right here is one of those things where because I'm not gonna mess around with the the F control but you can kinda get that sense by getting it mostly closed you know to make an F sound you have to get the mouth pretty much closed and so you're we're going almost all the way closed there and then a little bit open there for the you know or from the four and then closed again for the G or mostly closed you can probably open it just a little bit right there and then a big open for the ah and then the T is mostly closed and then the uh from the and the uh is very very simple in fact it's so quick here it's only one frame you can kinda of skip right over it because stop and think about it you can say forgot the cheese and you don't really open your mouth very much so you can actually leave the mouth sort of static right there as far as the jaw goes if you want to open it just a tiny little bit maybe you could okay and then we close it down again because we're gonna make a chest sound and then the E and then of course an S he's not gonna be closed all the way and this is the E part right here it's the ch E so okay that part right there of the waveform is not the E but it's the ch sound so forgot the we'll delete this key right here we'll close it up for the ch and then the E We'll get it open. All right, get it open there a little bit. And then we see as it diminishes right here in the waveform, you can do the same thing with the mouth. And then for the S is right there, okay? And then you can just relax right there back up to the close, okay? So now if we take a look at this, The thing here, I, I open the mouth a little bit on the on the S, but I'm actually I did that wrong. I would leave it a little bit more open on the E, and close it up on the S, and then relax up. Okay, cheese, and see how that's slowly closing at the same time. This is this E is descending, so that's what we're after here. Okay, um, let me go ahead and make a, a a preview of this, and we'll pop it in the edit, and you can see what it looks like. You forgot the cheese. You forgot the cheese. Okay, so that's pretty close. I mean, just see how simple that was, and it, you know, it's it's kind of on track. You know, the one thing we notice is that it is a little late. So I'm going to go ahead and do like I was going to do before, just have everything kind of hit a frame or two. I made it two frames sooner. For some reason, lip sync just feels better that way. So, all right, so there we go. I, I pretty much hit it. The the forgot part is a little flappy right here. The one thing about sliding stuff when you're working is is it's, you some, if you scrub and try to listen, you kind of get ahead of yourself. So I'm going to take it back to where the sounds were because when you scrub, it feels a little bit different. It's easy enough to slip it back when I make a pre preview. I think the open on the fur is just a little too much. I think it's just a little much, so it was a little flappy in there. There we go, a little bit better. All right. But I know it's an open because the mouth, you know, it's making a sound there. It's a little bit better. Now, you can't go off the waveform absolutely, but it's a good little guide. You know, like here, the ch is, is not an open mouth sound, but it's a strong one because it's a lot of release of air. So you go ch, and it, the back side of it is the mouth opening, okay? But the front side of it is the mouth being closed and held closed, and this hot spot right here is the air coming out of the mouth, okay? So as the air comes out of the mouth, the mouth is going to open up, all right? All right, and this is all you know. This stuff is all linear. It's it's nothing special, but it it gets you it gets you on the path. It's structure. Remember, my big thing is structure, then detail. Structure, then detail. This is the basic of structure. We're going up and down. We've got one channel. I am animating one channel only. If you look over here in the channel box. No keys on anything else. No forward and back. None of that other stuff. Let's not get tied up with all that stuff yet. Okay? The important thing here is to get your structure in place. Because if your structure is good, then you can start laying things on top of it real easily. All right. So we got that. So let's go ahead and start adding the in and out, the wide and narrow. The controller for that is this right here. In, out. Okay? So we'll take that back to zero. And we'll set a key here just to mark it. I said we'll set a key here to mark it. 
Let me mark the, use the same keys that we're using for the jaw, just to make it real simple. So the first one is U, right? U. But by the time you get back to the F, now does he go all the way wide again? No. But what, what, you, what you can do is leave a little bit of the U in there, like he's transitioning from U for. So the OR is going to have some of that in there. So use the F. The F can have a little bit of an in shape, okay? Because the F, the lips, not really that important, you know. But so what we'll do is we'll leave. just a little bit of an inside feel to it, okay? And by the time it gets to the G, we'll widen it up a little bit, okay? And then the got, you can go got or got. Ah is more of a wide sound, so we'll make that a little bit wider, okay? And then as far as the T, that T, that all, all T shapes are inside the mouth. So the out exterior shape of the mouth is really dependent on where it was and where it's going. Okay, so it's going to go from a wide A ah to a CH. Okay, for A, ah, the CH. So it's going to be somewhere in the middle here. It's not going to be not going to be narrow. You can do a T that way. You can do a T that way. You know, T's are all and D's and all those kinds of internal sounds of the mouth are very dependent upon at least how they ex appear externally, not the tongue, but I mean the the external in and out is dependent upon what what strong wide shape or narrow shape is around it, okay? These internal sounds, G's, K's, um, a lot of these things, even S's, T's, D's, N's, those are those are all happening inside um, the mouth cavity. So the external shape is more uh, a transition from one position to the next. Okay, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. There is no quote unquote T shape for lips because lips aren't important to make a T. You don't use them. You use your tongue and your teeth, and that's it. Okay, so so he goes here and he's open a little bit, and we can leave that the same. And then for the ch. The ch is more of an inside thing, like ch, all right? And we can tighten that down a little bit, too, if we want. And then the e, of course, is wide for cheese, OK? And you can, you can kind of tighten that, you know, make it come in a little bit so that the extreme is at first. And then for the s, we'll tighten it in a little bit more and then to rest will come in a bit. Okay? So, you forgot the cheese. Now, the that right there I'm not liking too much because it's the the. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave that kind of neutral. And then we'll get to a strong ch right there, okay? All right, so let's take this and this. And we'll take all these keys and we'll slide them back. Now, the one the one cool thing about working on a computer is you can scrub through this stuff and make it pretty simple. Um, you want to be careful to try and maintain some consistency as to where the the keys are falling. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to get into a position where you know you're tracking a bunch of different controllers all over the place. So what I try to do, if you notice here in the dope sheet, is I tried very much to keep the the middle lip and the jaw uh, on the same track. The one place where I didn't keep them, you know, the keys all the game, all the same was right here, because uh, I felt like the jaw needed to be closer close for the the part right in here. But um, it, it wasn't like it was really important to have the lips follow that right there because that's a transition thing. Remember, that's a that's an internal sound. A the is more of an internal sound. All right. And because of that, the external, which is the lip part, isn't as isn't as precise right here. It doesn't need to be as precise as say the jaw is, where we get the opens and the closes. Okay, but I still wanted to try and maintain order here. I can change this up later on, but for structure again, it's always good to have good organization in your structure because it just makes your job easier when you have to change things or fix them. All right. So we've got this, the the pop out on the. And the E is pretty wide right here, so I'm going to go ahead and soften that a bit. And then we'll soften it in a little bit right there, too. 
All right, so that's pretty good. These are, again, still all linear. So let's go ahead and make a, a play blast of this and then throw that in the edit and see what you think. You forgot the cheese. You forgot the cheese. All right, so you see right there, that's that's not too bad. Um, the, the chip part right here is a little too strong, so I'm going to take and back that off a little bit. I'm going to back that off just a little bit, okay, because I didn't like how much it was popping right there. We want to try and avoid strong transitions uh, too quickly over, over a short period of time. That's, that's true of the jaw, and it's true of the in and out. When you get that motor Michael, that motor mo motorcycle mouth, that, that, uh, that really flappy feeling that uh, sometimes, you know, bad stuttery lip sync gets, it's because the changes are too extreme over a short amount of time, okay? So we want to try and make sure we're, we're aware of that, and we don't want to get too crazy with it, okay? And so I'm going to just touch these things in a little bit to try and give them just a little bit more. There's a little more grace. And then this right here, this is one, two, three, four, five frames to kind of, it's kind of mushy. So I'm just going to go ahead and get in that a little bit tighter, set a key there, and then move it back just so it's a little bit tighter. And then I'll cheat that. There we go. All right. So what I'll do. Um, let's take all of these and I can go ahead and I'll even show you some stuff about how to do the old uh, how to do the old cleanup on these things so let's look at our animation editors our graph editor pretty simple stuff I translate Y sorry translate X now the thing with lip sync is you you can get in a little bit of trouble if you try to make things just a little too precious inside the graph editor. Okay, um, I find that keeping things overshooting a lot mm, sometimes doesn't work too well. So I try to tighten them down a little bit. If I get little bumps like this, I'm not super concerned about it. But I also know that if I clean that out, I'm not I'm not in any bad shape with that. Okay, there's nothing on that. There's nothing really much on this. I didn't even really mean to have those keys in there. And the translate Y. Again, I don't want to do too much overshooting. And you can kind of flatten off on the ends if you want to kind of give it a little more life. But, you know, watch the overshoot right there. Overshoot right there. That's okay. That's okay. Just real simple. You know, you can keep it linear or you can keep it spline. I mean, spline's nice, um, but you know what? Uh, I, I generally will spline out my um, my lip sync just because it helps soften up some of those rougher things. It, it makes the transitions a little bit easier, okay? And as I go through it, and I'm listening to it in my headphones, you can't hear it because the screen capture software doesn't get the audio. But this is is really, really hitting the mark. And how long did this take us? Maybe 10 minutes because I was explaining it. Um, and it's just really two things, up and downs, in and outs. And... And it's right there, you know, on a character rig like like a Moom, where he has these modifiers on him, you can throw the, you can throw a smile on him right away, and it doesn't quite work. But you kind of you can see where you can layer in with a more complex rig, even if you just use two controllers, this one and this one, for the in and out and the up and down. You can get what you exactly what you want to get as far as a performance that makes that makes sense. Let's make one last play blast on this, and uh, you can watch it and get a sense of what I did here and studying it and seeing how simple it is to just nail this stuff and and when you watch it you're gonna see hey I, I buy that now there's no emotion to it there's no body language to it there's absolutely nothing else going on but if you were to just put that simple that very very simple lip sync on top of a pretty decent body performance with eye direction you'd buy it it would work uh, sometimes I think I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I think we make this stuff a little more difficult than it needs to be. So, anyways, have a look at the Play Blast and uh, tell me what you think. You forgot the cheese. You forgot the cheese. All right, so um, I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you got a lot out of it. I um, I hope that this kind of makes it lip sync easier for, a, you know, for, for guys who've been doing this for a long time. You might be thinking, well, gee, that was a waste of time. But, hey, hey. You never know. I didn't learn a lot of this stuff until I'd been animating for five or six years. Okay, I didn't come up with this idea of just simple mechanics for a, a while. 
up until then, I was just kind of winging my way through it. And you know what? I was winging my way through it. And you know what happens when you wing your way through it? Yeah, it's the old Keith Lango VTS thing. You just scrub, 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 scrub. Your wrist hurts. It takes you 10 times longer than it should. And then finally it looks okay. Okay, if that's the way you do lip sync, then maybe you can benefit a little bit from a different approach. Okay, because I'll be honest with you, lip sync's one of those things when I'm animating, I save till last. Which brings up a question. Some people say, hmm, I've heard that you should animate the faith first and then do everything. Hey, whatever works for you. I know some very good animators who are face first kind of guys. I'm not one of them. Okay, uh, I at least not lip sync face. Okay, be, be, be mindful here. When I block my character, I block all the face, all the face. Phonetics, emotions, everything. The whole character, fingers, everything. So when you take a look at a still of that frame, the director is not in, not confused at all. Everything in the character is said. Okay, that's how I block so that when I show it to my director, he goes, I get that. I understand that. I don't have to sit there in dailies and say, well, he's going to be smiling here. <laughs> then make him smile, man. Well, it's, you know, sometimes you do that, okay? But... Some guys will spend a lot of time just working on the lip sync first. And for them, that's a way of kind of getting into the groove of the performance of what the character's saying and feeling. It's like their way of listening to the audio track. And they figure, while I'm listening, I'll go ahead and get the lip sync done. That's fine. It works for them. I could never make it work. Okay? Um, uh, if you're animating, one of the problems that I see from that, and I, I mean, there's, listen, I have my opinions. My opinions are mine because I think they're right. Okay? You have your opinions, they're yours because you think they're right. If you didn't think they were right, you wouldn't hold those opinions. True? Yes, of course, it's true. So, I have an opinion about animating to a face camera, which is pretty much the only way you can animate the mouth first. Okay, I've seen it lots of times, usually with younger animators, but the problem with animating to a face camera is you're making it look good to a camera that's not going to be seen by the audience. Okay? And I have a real strong desire and motivation to do everything for the audience. Okay? It's all about the audience. Anything you do that the audience doesn't see really isn't that important unless it affects what the audience sees. Okay? So what, we want, what I want to do is I always want to try and work through the, the camera view that the audience sees. Okay? And if you need to get in, zoom in close up because the shot's far away, well first thing you might think of is, well, if the shot's that far away, is the audience going to notice? In film, you'll notice, okay? In film, because the screen is 60 feet wide and the characters are big, you know, little things will show up. So you zoom in on them or something like that. That's okay, That's okay. all right? But, you know, if you got a character who's, you know, yard, you know, 50 yards away from something, really, open and close, narrows and wide, you got to nail Lip sync's done in five minutes, okay? Um... I know, that's a, a sin. He's accepting good enough. Oh, come on, guys. It's a business, all right? If you want to stay employed, you got to sometimes go, good enough, okay? Any other thing here? I mean, there's there's always the desire and the drive to do more. I know you guys uh, want to do more and want to get better, and, and I'm like that, too. I'm always trying to find new ways. So I think I'm carrying the bag pretty well here on, you know, improving our craft, but sometimes we get really, really tied up in super small things that just don't make a difference, okay? That's a sidetrack. Anyways, getting into the, the animating to a face camera is, is we tend to be very symmetrical about how we do the lip sync. We tend to be very uh, overly analytical of all the little things that work. Um, my opinion, I'm not sure how much of that actually really shows up. I mean, if you have to do that and that works for you and you're happy with it and you hit your deadlines and everybody loves you and your work is great, who am I to say that's not the way to do it, okay? But for me, I always found myself getting tied up in all these little details. And the next thing I know, I looked up and I've blown seven hours on, on, on lip syncing a scene. Guys, I don't know. To be honest with you, it shouldn't take you seven hours to lip sync a scene. That's in my opinion. I mean, if it does, unless it's a really long scene, okay? But if it's your typical feature film scene where you're running anywhere from... You know, the typical scene is about 70 frames, all right? There's a lot of them that are less. There's a bunch of them that are more. They usually run in the range anywhere from 30 to 120 frames. So bigger scenes, more than 120 frames, okay, that's another thing. So your typical scenes, 70, 80 frames, all right? 70, 80 frames is a little more than three seconds, a little less than four, 
That's a typical movie scene, all right? It, you shouldn't take a day to do lip sync, okay? It, it, to get it working, all right? If, it do, if you are taking longer than that, then you might want to back off and try and simplify how you're doing things. Not settle for less, but simplify how you do things, all right? So that's where the whole Muppet principle comes in. Because if you can just focus on those two things, opens and closed, narrows and wides, and you get that working, now you can start layering in, you know, some of the other finer details, and you can take as long as you want, all right? A lot of times, if you're in, in a production environment, you're sitting there and you're working away, working away, and you're like, oh gosh, this thing's due at, this thing's due at the end of the day, and it's, uh, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so I got three hours, okay? I got three hours if I want to go home and have dinner with my with my family, all right? Or if I don't care about that, I can take it as long as I want. Well, go ahead and burn yourself out and stay till 10 o'clock if you like, but there is a way to get it done in three hours. Focus, 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 and then once you get, it's like anything else I've ever taught. You get the foundationals, the principles, the, the core structure in place first, and then you add the details, all right? I approach lip sync the same way I approach everything. Core, core principles, core function, foundation, structure, then details. All right? The structure of lip sync is a three-part thing. Next video, we talk about the third part, which is emotion. Okay? And that's, that's really important, especially when we're talking about performances for, for audiences. It's, it's like, that's what we're here for, right? To perform for an audience, to communicate emotion. All right, that's enough of me blabbing this month. Um, so uh, thanks again for your patience and getting this one. Thanks for everybody's support, love, and emails and everything. It was great. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, you all be good to each other. You keep trying to do good work. Uh, stay well, and God bless.